So, hello everyone, this is Suhail and uh, in today's video I will show you my homemade go-to equatorial mount. I bought this mount myself and I'm excited to share with you how I did it and how it works. Certainly, a go-to equatorial mount can greatly enhance your astronomical observing and your astrophotography capabilities. Uh, with a go-to equatorial mount, you can easily track the celestial objects as they are moving from the east to the west across the sky, or even locate uh, automatically and find an image uh, deep sky objects that would be difficult or even impossible to find with a manual operated mount. Um, there are many different types of uh, go-to mounts available, ranging from small and simple tabletop to large and complex and heavy computerized uh, go-to mounts. However, building your own uh, go-to mounts can be a great way to learn about astronomy and electronics and mechanical engineering, uh, especially mechanical engineering, and can be much more affordable uh, than buying a pre-made uh, mount too. Uh, anyway, first of all, uh, let's talk about what a go-to mount is. Uh, a go-to mount is a telescope mount that can automatically point a telescope to a specific object in the night sky. It uses motors, encoders sometimes uh, in some, uh, some mounts, and uh, uh, computer software to accurately find and track the celestial objects, and that making things easier to find, track, and photograph. Now let's uh, take a closer look to my homemade go-to equatorial mount. Um, I bought this mount using basic materials like wood, PVC pipes, and uh, a few motors and um, some metal pieces. Uh, anyway, I also used uh, an ESP32 microcontroller to control the mount's movements uh, and the uh, the other uh, inputs uh, devices. Um, the mount has two axes: the right ascension axis and the declination axis. The right ascension uh, axis is aligned with the Earth's rotational axis, while the declination axis is perpendicular to the right ascension axis. Uh, the mount actually hasn't a polar alignment scope, but I use uh, uh, a plugin in Nina uh, named Three Point Polar Alignment, and it's actually more accurate than the polar scope. So yeah, it's it's better and less complicated. Now let's talk about uh, the OnStep controller. OnStep is a uh, Telescope controller firmware is an open source firmware that can be used to retrofit many types uh, of telescopes and mounts. It provides a wide range of features and capabilities, including uh, automated go to and tracking, uh, dew heaters control, uh, flat panel control switches, uh, focusers, rotators. So uh, really, really a lot of a lot of things to, to operate automatically, as well as support for a variety of input devices such as hand controllers, mobile devices, computer softwares like, for example, Stellario. So the mount with OnStep can be controlled with with Stellarium or Nina or any uh, Sky Planetarium uh, software. OnStep also uh, has a lot of versions, uh, depending on the, the number of inputs or the outputs of the uh, controller. The version that I'm using right now is the Max ESP3 version. The Max ESP3 version is a version based on the ESP32 microcontroller, and here is a uh, uh, image uh, that shows you um, the inside of the of the box of the controller. So as we can see here, 
we can see the uh, microcontroller, the SP32 microcontroller that is right there. And this is the, uh, the primary uh, objects in the controller. This is the processor, of course. We can, we can see uh, the ESP8825 uh, maybe. Uh, this is a Wi-Fi module, of course, to control the mount. Uh, using Wi-Fi, so wirelessly from computer or, uh, or a phone. Uh, we can see uh, also the drivers of the motors. I'm using here the uh, LV driver and the DRV drivers. And for the supply, I'm using LM2597 maybe, and this is a DC to DC converter. So it converts from 90 volts to uh, 5 volts for the, uh, the ESP32 and the Wi-Fi module. We can also see the real-time clock and of course this is not really, really, it's, it's, it's optional for this version of OnStep but for example the STM32 version is really necessary and OnStep will not boot uh, without this, uh, this module this real-time clock. The name of that module is DS, um, DS31, maybe 3135. I, I don't, I don't really remember. And of course, there are uh, the ports uh, for uh, the motor, for example, the focuser, and uh, the smart hand controller, the uh, power supply, of course. So. That's it. This is uh, this is the, the the controller, and that's all uh, for the uh, micro uh, controller and uh, the OnStep controller. So now, uh, did it actually work? And the answer is yes, it works. And I tested the last month, and I take that picture using this DIY mouse. So, yes, yeah, it's, it's a really good, good image. Uh, okay, uh, now let's see how it works. Okay. Now, as you can see here, the, uh, this, is, this is the coordinates of the, the mount. That P right here means that the mount is parked. And this is the uh, guide uh, rate. Okay, so if I if I click here, that will change change the uh, guide rates to faster, and this button here to lower fast rates. Okay, now we go to parking here. And click on in and park. Okay, now the the mount is tracking. Okay, and as you can see here, the mount is tracking. And uh, now we can uh, go to align if you if if you want to align the uh, mount. <clears throat> we can go here to tracking to stop it or changing the rate from sidereal solar lunar we can go also in parking for park the telescope and uh, here is sync okay we can sync the the, the mount uh, to uh, to a celestial object and here is go to so we click on go to and we have here stars, deep sky, and solar system. So stars, if you want to go to a star, deep sky, if you want to go to a deep sky object, and solar system, if you want to go to a planet or, or something like that. So let's go to solar system. And now it's it's about I think one uh, one p.m. So Venus, Venus, no, it's not visible. Okay, okay Mercury. For example, let's go to Mercury. Mercury is going to be visible during the morning. So we we'll click right here and slow target. And Godru is uh, started now. Now the mount is slow.
Okay, now the mount is is pointing to Mercury. Okay, now we can go back to the parking position. So we go to park and click on park right here. And now the mount is slowing to the parking uh, position. Okay, and now the telescope is parked, and as you can see here, the P, and that means that the, that the mount is parked. Okay, so that was the control of the mount from uh, from the hand controller. Now let's see how we can control this mount wirelessly from the uh, computer. We can the same thing we can do with uh, with the uh, a mobile phone or something. It's the same uh, the same thing. Okay. So first of all, let's connect to uh, OSEP Wi-Fi. Here it is. So click on connect. Okay, now it's connected. Now we open the web server of OSEP. This is the web server of the OSEP controller. We go to Mount and we click on Unpod. Okay, now the mouse is Unpod. Okay, now Let's go to Stellari. Okay. Now let's go to, to, to this telescope icon. We click on configure telescopes and I already configured uh, the mouse here, so I'm gonna just click on it. Okay, as you can see, the mouse is connected. Now let's just close, close this. Okay, <clears throat> now the mouse will be at the NC, at the North Swissel Pole, because it's at the home position. Okay, for example, let's go to um, let's just choose uh, choose an object. For example, okay, for example, uh, Mars. Okay, let's let's choose. One. Okay, we we'll click on Morse and we we'll click on Control 1. And as you can see, the mouse is slow. And of course, there is no cable between the mouse and the PC. It's all wireless. Here we go. And the telescope is pointed to more. If we want to go back to the home position, just go to uh, the web server and click on find home. And the mouse will go back to the, to the home position and then we'll click the port and turn off the uh, map. Of course we can change the go to rates, the speed rates of go to from uh, from here controls and here we go. The normal speed is 2 degrees per second. We can go higher or slower, faster or slower. For example, the 
the lowest one, the slow one is one degree per second, and the fastest one is the four uh, is four degree per second. We can also turn off the buzzer or turn it on. But we have we have a lot of settings here. So as you can see, the telescope now is plugged. So that's it. And for the auxiliary, this is an analog out, and the analog out is connected to that port right here. So, uh, and the, the lead next to the port is connected with, these, uh, with, the, with the port itself. So, if I make this to, I change it to 1%, for example, as you can see, the, the lead will turn on. 15%. Will uh, be much brighter, and that's it. This is this is the this is how it works. So <coughs> with this signal, <coughs> uh, this analog signal, we can control, for example, a flat panel brightness or a motor. Maybe we can we can do a lot of a lot of things. And this is an interferometer to control the, the camera, the, the the SLR. We have. Uh, a port for that in the controller. So we connect the camera with that port in the controller and we just uh, set the count. So the count is uh, the number of the images I want to take, the exposure time of each, uh, of each image, and the delay, the time between uh, each image. is five seconds, for example. And just like that, and you click start, and of course, the imaging will start. So this is really simple, and of course this is wireless too. We can uh, we can also uh, we can also get the information of the weather. Okay, now after connecting uh, after opening, you know, we can of course connect the camera, you know, the equipment, uh, telescope, or whatever. Anyway. The thing you want to see is the wheel part, okay? So we go to your to drivers and we click on all step observing conditions. And we connect to this, and there we go. This is the information of the wheel. The temperature, the humidity, the pressure, and the dew point. This is the more important thing, is the dew point, okay? So that's it for that's it for that video. I hope you enjoyed watching this. If you have any questions, just ask me in the comments. And yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching.